Hello everybody. This is the first, my first attempt at a video tutorial. Uh, I've done a lot of PDF tutorials which are available on my blog, which is the twistfamily.blogspot.com. There's a tab at the top of the page that says tutorials. And when you click on it, you can find an alphabetical list of a whole bunch of tutorials for various finishes. Um, this particular one I'm going to do right now for you is a little strawberry scissor fob. I thought I would start with something simple for my benefit as well as yours. Um, this one, this finished fob that I'm showing you is from the first in my 12 month series of festive little fobs. This is from the Valentine one. And, um, the one I'm going to be constructing for this video is from the second installment, which is the, st the springtime edition. So, um, provided in the pattern, you have a little cone-shaped template, um, which first thing you need to do is place it over your stitched motif, which is this little basket and you want to make sure that it aligns with there's some tiny little lines on the template itself that you want to align with the warp and the weft of the linen and place it directly over your motif so your motif is relatively centered and I just do that by kind of holding it with my finger in one place and checking until I'm happy with the placement and then I just take one pin because I'm not a complete perfectionist and just pin it in place. And then I'm going to trim all the linen all the way. Oh, I forgot I had the fob on there. Um, take that off because it will distract me. Um, trim all the way around the template. And you can always trim on the generous side if you're concerned about, you know, overcutting because it's not an exact science, at least not the way I do it. Um, there's a lot of room for fiddling around and tweaking and um, I don't ever want anybody to think that there's only one right way to make these little th things, um, whether it be a pin cushion or um, any sort of finished object. Um, I think a lot of people are really intimidated of doing their own finishing because it just looks like it's such a precise um, practice, but it really isn't, at least not the way I do it. So I'm going to show you just how imprecise I can be. Look at my edges. They're a little outside, they're not exactly straight, and it's all okay. So once you've cut your shape out, then you want to fold over and make a little slice of pizza out of it. You can kind of gently finger press it. So now you've got um, your straight edges lined up. And I probably should have threaded my needle already so that you didn't have to watch me do that because I'm sure you all know how to thread a needle. Um, I'm not using a thread that's actually in this particular motif because I sent my whole stock of threads off to my model stitchers. So I just found one that coordinates with the colors I used and in this case it's parchment from the Gentle Art. Um, I am going to do this with a doubled over thread. I often do it with just a single but for strength I'm going to do a double. So we'll just thread the needle and then along this straight open edge starting at the bottom. Here's why I did a doubled over because now I don't have to tie a knot. I'm just going to slip that right through the loop and then do a relatively close together running stitch all the way along this edge. Um, if you want, you can 
cut trim across this little bottom tip here, but there's not enough. Sometimes if there's too much there, it can get in the way of your point at the end of your strawberry, but because there's not a whole lot there, I'm not going to bother. That's just a matter of preference. So we're going to continue on all along this edge. And then once you get to the top, don't, don't bother knotting at this point because you're actually going to continue to use the same thread to gather the top of your strawberry. So there you have it, just a really simple running stitch front and back. Now you're going to turn this right side out, the simple little flip. Um, if you get down here to the tip and you want more of it to pop out, you could take something like your scissors, um, a chopstick, something to just gently, not with a lot of force because you don't want to blow out that tip, just push the point through. And now you see what is going to show on the front of this little strawberry fob. Okay, now you're going to take, pick up your needle again, and you are going to just do a running stitch. Doesn't have to be close together this time, all around the top of the opening. This is probably one, this is probably the best. If you've never done finishing, a little strawberry is probably one of the best um, places for you to start because it's very uncomplicated and forgiving and um, comes together pretty quickly. So um, don't be afraid to give it a try. And if you've already done a million of these, I'm probably not teaching you anything new um, because they're all pretty much constructed very similarly. Okay, now at this point you can fill it with whatever filling you choose. Polyfill, um, you could use something heavier like a crushed walnut shell. In this case, I'm going to use some fabric scraps. <laughs> These are scraps left from a market bag I made for my aunt down in Arizona. She likes the Southwest prints, so I've got little bits of fabric that are light enough that they're not going to show through this light colored linen. And I'm just going to pack a bunch of these scraps in there with the print kind of folded to the inside just in case. I don't want it to show through too much. Although I kind of like the look of, you know, the little hint of, ooh, there's something inside of there. I wonder what it is. I've also been known to use the linen trim. Um, to stuff the inside of these strawberries. Really anything that I have on hand doesn't really matter. I once um, got a pillow that was one of my grandmother's and it was falling apart and I was trying to refix it and when I opened it up, you should have seen what was inside of it. There was even old nylons. Somebody, a nightgown. She just stuffed it with whatever she had on hand and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Although, I'm not putting pajamas or socks inside. So now, we're just going to give a gentle pull to gather the top of your strawberry. See if you like how full it is. Um, you may want to stuff a little more in there. I think I'm actually going to put a little more in there. It looks a little bit scrawny. Um, it's amazing how much you can actually pack into one of these. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. Pull it tight again and I think I'll be happier with how full the top is. Yeah, that's much better. So, now at this point, take your thread and just do a couple of cross 
stitches like this back and forth across that little ragged opening um, just enough to hold it in place and then you're gonna uh, set this aside for a minute um, it, for the leaves at the top of the strawberry I provided some little wonky star shaped templates you can either pin them and trim or do what I'm doing and just hold them on there and just trim around those leaves again this is not an exact science and if they all looked exactly the same as each other it would kind of take some of the fun and interest and part of what I really like about antique pin cushions and old samplers is that they were created by most of the time little girls who didn't have the experience to have these perfect little finishes and I love that naive slightly primitive wonky look that they have so which is why I didn't make a very pretty star shape for this leaf top so this is the one that's going to go on to your strawberry first oh I totally forgot a step um, I think I'm going to pause my video because I forgot that I need to attach my um, loop material to the top before I put the leaf on and I haven't prepared it so I'm going to prepare it and then I will start this video back up Okay, so the magic of technology, um, I just turned the camera off for like 20 minutes and you don't even know the difference. But what I did during that time is I braided um, some Gentle Art wool thread, actually. I thought the wool might be a nice look with this particular one because of the little woolen tops. Um, but you could use anything. You could use cotton sock weight yarn, you could use string, you could use DMC or other threads. Um, I used, for each section of the braid, I used, I think it's three or four single strands of um, the Gentle Art wool. And I would recommend if you were using a standard six strand floss to use the whole six strand, just to give it enough substance that it can hold up to um, you know, going on and off your scissors or whatever you're going to use it for. Um, anyway, that's what I did. And then I cut it to length. I made it way too long, so I'm going to use some later for another project. Um, I kind of sort of measured what the other length was, and I thought I wanted to go a little bit longer this time, so I just, that's how exact the science is. I have no idea how long it actually measures, but I like how it looks and so I'm gonna go with it so you still have your hopefully have your needle and thread attached to the top there's no need to tie a bunch of knots because this is all interconnected so I'm just gonna put my two little knots um, right at the very center top where they can be easily covered with your woolen leaves and I'm just going to stitch around those knots a couple times. Only once or twice is probably good. Maybe come at it from a different direction each time just to reinforce what you're doing and holding it steady. Um, but I don't know, that feels pretty good to me, so maybe once more. Don't ever take one of my fobs that I've made and try to play tug of war with it because it will probably fall apart. <laughs> um, you could, you know, you could put some little fabric glue in there if you wanted uh, because you are going to actually now cut a little hole in the middle of your, the larger of your woolen leaves and 
you're going to thread your little loop right through it. I'll show you in a second here. So I'm just going to cut a little snip, just big enough that I can take this and poke it through and pull that all the way down. And now this one you're going to actually stitch in place all the way around the edges. So what I would do is kind of play with it. How Which way do you want it to turn? I think I'm going to have it like this so that the leaves frame the little basket. And continuing on with the same thread, I'm just going to start stitching down around all of the edges of my leaves. And it's just a simple little in and out Run your thread behind through your strawberry and just, you're basically just tacking the edges down and I like how it looks when the stitches show like this. Um, just adds a little bit more of a primitive look to it, which I am a fan of. And this might get a little bit boring, so what's something I can tell you about myself? Oh, well this is funny. I don't paint my fingernails very often, but obviously I just painted them yesterday and that's actually what prompted me making this video because I was like, oh my fingernails are so cute. Maybe I should actually get it recorded on video for posterity because who knows when the next time will be when I put some polish on them. So I'm just, I think I got a little bit twisted here on my little guy, so it's not going to turn out exactly how I wanted because I wasn't paying attention, but that's okay. I am just going to keep going because the nature of wool and linen is you can kind of manipulate if you're hand sewing. It's a lot harder if you're machine sewing to kind of make it bend how you want it to. But I am going to figure out how I can stitch this all the way down without hiding my little basket motif. Um, here's another interesting fact about myself. I actually don't like using scissor fobs. I find that when I have them on my scissors, I'm constantly grabbing my scissors the wrong way and um, whacking myself or I don't know it just gets in the way of my methods and so I end up getting kind of angry at them so I more often use them on my rings with my threads as sort of a little decoration okay I think what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna partially you see what I did I turned it so now I've got this little guy that's gonna come down over my flowers so I am going to, first I'm going to finish off this thread because I'm at the end. So I just, you see what I did there? I pulled it, did a stitch, and then underneath where this is going to be sewn down is where I'm going to hide my knot. I'm just going to do a simple little through and down. Oops, where did it go? Okay, snip that off, and now you get to watch me thread another needle. I've heard it said you're not supposed to hold your needle in your mouth, but I do it all the time. And so far I have never impaled my tongue. If you've done so, I'm sorry. I don't mean to brag. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. All right, here we go again. So where's the eye of my needle? I can't see it. By the way, I am using, um, I like John James 26 Petites, and I like Petites because they help me to be so much more efficient. I, I sew in hand, and so I can do the needle turning really quickly because it's not so long. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to let this little point of leaf sort of float out there and actually not stitch it down and I think that will take care of my problem. 
and actually might be kind of cute. And if not, once I get back done with stitching around, I might trim that a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. Obviously, there's plenty of making it up as you go along if you're not being um, precise and particular. I'm sorry, I just realized I was not centered under the camera. I hope I wasn't completely off camera for that portion. My apologies if I was. I guess if I was, I can always edit it out later. So, we're just going to keep stitching around. Make sure that your little woolen point is not hiding your little cross stitches that you put in place. And I'm almost all the way around. So the other thing I did while I was taking a little break and making my braid is I cut out the other little star and I already cut a little center um, hole in it so it's ready to go. Um, if you are watching this as you're constructing, obviously this can't happen, but if you watch it and then you go about your construction, you can um, make this process go pretty quickly if you have all of your little parts ready ahead of time. Have all of your template shapes cut, have your needle threaded like I did not, have your um, whatever you're going to use here. You can use seam binding like I did on this one, you can use rickrack. There's all different options. If you have all of your materials ready when you start, um, I'm guessing that this project is probably a 40 minute project tops. If you're quick, you could probably do it faster. Okay, so again, I am going to leave my thread. I'm not gonna knot it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it up to the center like this. And there's a reason for that. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to live with this. I think what I'm going to do, watch me mess this up, I am going to cut like that to make his point a little bit different. And I am going to come over here quickly and just tack that point down because now that I cut it, it's not going to hide anybody. And then come back up to the center. Like that. There. You never know. Unless you watch the tutorial. <laughs> now you know. Okay, so, like we did with the first one, we are going to thread through that little hole that we snipped in the middle. The nice thing about felted wool is it doesn't unravel um, it just kind of holds its shape, which is really wonderful. Okay, now rotate your little leaves so you kind of are overlapping. Maybe some of the points are going to fill holes that were left from the last grouping of leaves. And this little guy at the top, you can do it like I did on this one and leave all of the little points free. I don't know if you can see that very well and the bottom layer is tacked down. So, I think because of my goof up here, I'm actually gonna tack down all the way around the edges of this one. Um, but the reason I had you leave your thread in the middle is because you just do simple tacks at each of the points where it comes in instead of stitching all the way around. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna follow my own rules. And so I don't make the mistake I did last time, I am going to start in the front rather than the back so that I know that my little motif is going to show just how I want it. And actually what I might do is leave just the bare tips. Instead of just tacking once on each indent, I'm going to do a tack, 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 tack. and. I think that will remedy the situation that I caused for myself. And here's an example of 
how flexible the wool is. If I just let this fall where it wants to, it would overlap this one more than I like. But since it's sort of stretchy fabric, I can actually manipulate it and have it come over here. Coming back around to the front again. And this is not becoming my favorite strawberry, people. But I've demonstrated the process. What am I going to do? I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to trim this guy. That will be a little better. Okay, so now this is your final. You're done with your, your thread after this. You're almost done with your fob. So bring it up to the center and do a little double knot should be sufficient again. This was supposed to be a demonstration of how if you're not precise everything still turns out wonderful and I don't really love this little guy. But that's okay. It also demonstrates that even somebody who's made a whole bunch of these can still make it a little bit wonky and it's okay. So the final step you're going to take is you're going to just do a little, a little knot right at the top of the, the little woolen leaves to kind of finish off where your, um, your thread comes through. And there you have a little strawberry who's not quite as cute as his sister. But that's how it's done. And um, I hope that you learn something new or at least don't feel like you totally wasted your time watching this video.